Hey, good evening everybody. Pastor James here uh, for Homegrown, our Homegrown Bible Study. Uh, it's been two full weeks since we've done this, um, and I'm going to get right into it. Uh, so let's get started, and I'm going to pray uh, for our country at the end of our study tonight, all right? Um, and so we have been out away for two weeks, so let me just quickly review the whole purpose of this Homegrown Bible Study, how to grow your relationship with God at home. And uh, in John 17, 3, Jesus defined eternal life as us knowing uh, God himself and him, right? He said, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So Jesus defined uh, eternal life in relational terms, knowing, knowing him, right? Not just, not just believing, not just having our sins forgiven, but living in a relationship with the one true living God, okay? And what we've been saying in this study and looking at from the Bible is we get to know God uh, by two things uh, interacting together, okay? And that is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God and the Word of God. We cannot know God, we won't get to know God as deeply, as experientially, as personally, right, as, as we can um, if we don't interact, if we don't learn to interact with God, the Holy Spirit who lives in us, and with God's Word, okay? That is how we get to know God. And we've been looking at the first church, uh, the, uh, the church in Acts, um, and asking ourselves, are we the same as they are? Are we the same kind of believers as they were? Are we the same kind of church, meeting house church, uh, as that first church was? Um, and I think the answer is no, uh, but that's okay. Uh, we can be and will be. Um, so let's jump into this. We've been talking about what it means to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. All right, and I'm going to pick up in Acts chapter one, uh, and then we're going to and then we're going to jump to where uh, we left off last time. Okay, in Acts chapter 1, Jesus has died for our sins. He's been buried. He's been resurrected. He's uh, then, uh, after his resurrection, he's visited, spoken with, taught the apostles uh, for, uh, for about 40 days um, and uh, to the day of Pentecost. And now he's about to ascend and return back to heaven. And he says to them, uh, the apostles and the first believers, uh, in verse 4, Chapter Acts chapter 1, verse 4. It says, On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John, that's John the Baptist, baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So Jesus tells them that something is going to happen. They're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a few days. All right? Then let's jump down to verse 8. And it says, uh, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So in a few days, when they're baptized with the Holy Spirit, they're going to receive power. And it's power to do something. Uh, you, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on, on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea, uh, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Okay? So there's Jesus' promise. Then immediately after that, he returned to be with his Father in heaven, which is what we have noted had to happen before he would then send the Holy Spirit, and, they, uh, and we would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, right, now it's time for... For, for, the, for, for Jesus to baptize them with the Holy Spirit. They were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. Okay? So they're all, the apostles along with the other believers, the other first believers, were together praying, and now 
now uh, Jesus baptizes them with the Holy Spirit. He sends the Holy Spirit, and one of the one of the things the Holy Spirit empowered them to do was to speak in other languages. Okay, and so at this point, the city of Jerusalem is packed with people. It's Pentecost. They've come from all over the place, from different countries. They're different uh, ethnic groups, <coughs> um, all kinds of different people, and so they begin. They, the, the sound uh, draws attention. They come out of the room where they were gathered and begin to speak the gospel, the wonders of God, the, the Bible tells us, uh, in, in these other languages so that these other Jewish people who had come from other countries can understand them, hear them in their native language. Okay, um, And uh, then Peter, they say, you know, what's going on here? What is this? And Peter preaches a sermon to them to explain two things. What the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, baptism with the Holy Spirit is, and the gospel. And of course they go together because we cannot receive the Holy Spirit uh, and be baptized with the Holy Spirit unless we believe the gospel, right? So now, I'm, I know I'm going 100 miles an hour, but we're going to slow down. I'm just trying to kind of get us up to speed to where we were last time. All right, now let's go to the end of Peter's sermon, okay? He's preached to the crowd. He's told them about Jesus. He's told them that this gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, that he promised it, and this is what they had, that what they were uh, experiencing. And in uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 37, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles. Well, let me read verse 36 as well. Uh, Peter ends his sermon with these words. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Okay? And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, right? That's the conviction of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Okay? And Peter answers. Peter replied, I'm in verse 38 now, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, or the forgiveness of your sins, um, and you will receive uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, remember, the whole sermon started out with, what is this gift of the Holy Spirit that everybody saw? And now Peter brings it to a conclusion. Repent, be baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh, the promise is for you, for your children, and for all those who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Okay? And so, I pointed out last time that we are those who are far off, right? Um, and uh, because we're far off in time, 2000, this was 2,000 years ago, and we're far off in distance. But we were in a, from another country. But Peter says the promise of salvation through Jesus Christ and the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, to us, to empower us, to so that we can know God, right, um, uh, comes uh, is for us as well, right? Um, and so, uh, well, let's just continue in the, with, with Acts, okay? Um, and it says, with many other words, he warned them, okay? So at that point, uh, they were baptized, right? Right? Uh, Oh, well, we haven't got there yet. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message, right, they believed the good news about Jesus Christ, were baptized, right, with water and with the Holy Spirit. Um, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Okay? So imagine that. That's every preacher's dream, right? Preach the gospel and 3,000 people uh, are saved and baptized. I mean, praise God, right? Uh, so, but I want you to see, right? Let's remember this question. Are we the same as the first believers? Okay? And is our church or are our churches the same as this first church? Okay? Because I want you to see what these... 3,000 uh, new believers did immediately, okay? Um, let's jump to uh, Acts chapter 42, right? So uh, I'm gonna, let me read 40, verse 41, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 41 again, and then I'll continue into 42. It says, 
those who accepted Peter's message were baptized with water and with the Holy Spirit, right? They received the gift, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Verse 42, and they, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So, who is, if you have your Bible, verse 42 starts out with they. They devoted themselves. Who is they? It's the 3,000 new believers that were just baptized, that just believed and were baptized. Okay? So immediately, as soon as they became believers, they were baptized uh, in water and with the Holy Spirit, right? Um, they What did they do? They immediately devoted themselves to some things. And this is... See, this is what I this is what I when I'm talking about when I say, are we the same as the first believers, and are our churches the same as the first church? Because here's what the first church did, right? The first believers did. They did the as soon as they were, became believers, they devoted themselves to some things, right? To get to know the Lord, right? To the apostles' teaching was the, is the first thing, and of course, right? The New Testament in particular, is the apostles' teaching. We have that here, so we can devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching as they did, right? Reading, uh, going to Bible studies, going to church, hearing the gospel, spending time, uh, probably number one most important thing is spending time, you and God alone, with his word. There's nothing that will build your relationship with God uh, more than that, okay? Um, so they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, okay, what's that? That's the church, right? That's the other, right? But on this day, that before, the, when this day started, there were only 120 believers in the church at Jerusalem. At the end of the day, there were 3,120, 3, right? So they devoted themselves to the fellowship. So the fellowship of believers, which is the local church, um, is, is important for us. Because we, we were never, we, well, we can't. We cannot walk this, this walk with Jesus Christ alone, right? He's given us a body to be a part of, and we all need to be a part of a body. Here's an uh, uh, illustration I always use. Um, right, the church is a body, right? And Paul talks about it in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you know. Uh, you know, just as a body has many different parts, it's got ears, it's got eyes, it's got feet, it's got hands, right? So the church, okay? Now let me ask you a couple of questions. Can a body part survive for long outside the body? Nope, can't, can it, right? You know, what, what, say someone's getting a liver transplant, right? And why do they, why do they uh, remove the liver from the donor and get it? to the recipient as quickly as possible. Well, there's two reasons. The first reason is because that donated organ cannot survive outside of a body for long. And the second reason is because the body can't survive and thrive without that body part, right? So that's why you don't see, you know, a, a single leg walking down the street or a liver, you know, kind of crawling down the sidewalk because they don't live outside the body, right? They don't survive, and we're that way. We need the body of Christ and to be in relationship and fellowship with the body of Christ if we're going to come to know God as he wants us to know him, right? This is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread. What's that? That's the celebration of the Lord's Supper or communion, right? Because that's what God, that's what Jesus told us to do. All right, to remember his death in that way, in an act of worship. And to prayer. To prayer. And as we go through the, we're not going to go through the whole books of, book of Acts in this study, but we're going to in church. I mean, what you find out is that the first church was devoted to congregational prayer. Um, and as a matter of fact, we, if we get there today, we'll see, or, or next week, that... Uh, Prayer um, is very, very key to uh, the uh, power and the presence uh, of the Holy Spirit on us to enable us uh, to, to serve uh, God. Um, it's incredible. They go together hand in hand throughout the book of Acts. Right? As a matter of fact, 
the day of Pentecost. What were the first 120 believers doing when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit? They were gathered together praying. Okay? Um, so let's just stop right there and think. Hmm, am I someone, right, because this is about growing our relationship with God, right? The greatest gift that God gives you and me uh, through the good news, through Jesus Christ, is himself. It's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is a means to an end. It is, the, it is the thing that has to happen so we can be in relationship with God, right? It's not answered prayer, right? God answers prayer and he does. It's not miracles. He does miracles, and, and, but those aren't the great. The greatest thing that God can give you is the gift of himself, right? That's what the gospel is. It's God offering himself to us so that we can live in relationship with him, so we can know him, right? And the point we've been making throughout the study is that, that, right, so is that knowing God in this personal, direct way, uh, God has made that possible through the Holy Spirit being in us, right, and on us. So being a Christian is not only just knowing, you know, truths, propositions about God, um, and memorizing them and remembering them and then trying to obey them. We, 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 the Word of God is essential to get to know God because He reveals Himself to us in it. But it's more than that. We have a direct relationship with God through the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is in us. And because we can be baptized, we are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So that's incredibly important. Um, it's it's huge difference. It's the difference between uh, learning, you know, uh, facts in history class about somebody, right? Uh, that's one way to get to know a person, but that person's not there uh, to, to for you to have a conversation with, for you to interact, right? If I want to learn about George Washington, I can go read historical documents and all kinds of stuff and kind of get to know him. But the knowledge that God gives us, that God offers us of him, is greater than that. We're not just learning f about God from a book. Um, the, the two things we need are the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, okay? And it's the Holy Spirit that gives us that direct, personal relationship uh, with God Himself, because He is God Himself, and He's in us, and He's with us, and He's on us, okay? So that's, uh, then, then let, let's go on in, in verse 43. It says, everyone, right, the whole church uh, was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. So this is something else that you see in connection with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Is at the beginning, the apostles only were doing many signs and wonders. Okay, They were healing people. They were praying for people and they were becoming healed. They were casting out uh, demons from those who were possessed. All right? That's what the Bible means when it talks about uh, miraculous signs. All right, were done by the apostles. But as we'll see in a chapter or two, that wasn't limited to only the apostles. Uh, St Philip and, and Stephen also did such things, among others. Okay, um, And all the believers were together and had everything in common. Okay, Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. So the church was a place where they took care of each other. They didn't just meet together on Sunday, right? It was a place where if you had a need, a legitimate need, the other people in the church banded together, teamed together because you're part of the body, and they would they would meet that need. They would help you, okay? And that's, that's what we have to be at Meeting House Church because anything less is not a biblical church. And that's the kind of Christians we need to be because anything less is not a biblical Christian, you know? I want us, listen, if, there, if you could think of any group of people, okay, let me put it this way, who did it right, who did Christianity right, who knew God, right, wouldn't it be these first 120 believers, right? There was, there was the 12 apostles, and they, they, right, they lived with Jesus, plus some others, right, for three and a half years, so they knew him well, right? Um, and then, uh, so if there were any believers who knew exactly if there ever on planet Earth uh, a group of believers who did it perfect or as close to perfect as we possibly can, it would be these believers, right? 
I think so. And if there was ever a church that did it as close to the way God wanted it to be, it would be these. It would be this church, right? I, I, I think that's you, you can't argue with that logic. And so, He wants you and me to be believers like these first believers were believers. And what I mean is, we're not just people who believe the same things. I think we're the same there. Uh, you know, as a believer, we all we all believe in Jesus Christ. He's the Son of God. He right. He left heaven, became a man, bore our sin, died on the cross, rose again. Right, conquering it. Those of us who we put our faith in Him, right, we're, we're forgiven. We begin a relationship with God. He returned to heaven. Right, you know, we, we, the Holy Spirit is with us. God's coming back. You know, the whole story. Okay, we we believe that. But they have power. They have the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that we do not have. You just don't see it. I mean, have you ever seen a church? Have you ever been to a church like this church? Have you ever run into believers like these believers? I haven't. I haven't. Um, and, but I want me to, this is what God wants Meeting House Church to be. And it's the, it's, it's the kind of Christ follower that, that he wants you to be and me to be. Okay? Um, let's keep that in mind. This is not something spectacular that was, that, you know, that happened once and was never to happen again. These people were just normal humans like you and me. But this is how God wants us to know Him and live for Him and with Him. Okay, um, and I, that's exciting, man. This is what God has for for you and for me. All right. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. Right. So their relationship with God was not something they did just one hour a week on Sunday. It was an everyday thing, right? They spent time with God uh, every day and with each other uh, to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, right? So these people, it looks like they actually liked each other, right? They spent time with each other. Now, I, you know, there's geography and, you know, work schedules and all those things. I, I get it, you know. Uh, so, but, but we need to make it a priority to build relationships, to get in uh, within our church family. I know it's hard right now. We're in the coronavirus thing. But this is why we have uh, community groups at Meeting House. This is why we're big with the in-touch teams. When, when someone's new, we want to get them on an in-touch team so they have a group of friends to start interacting with. It's so important. Um, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, uh, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Okay? So I think we've got... So daily, this isn't a church that was flatlined, right? They're out living. They're a living witness, right? Just the way they do their jobs, the way they interact with work, you know, just, just shouts Jesus to everybody around them, right? They're filled with the Holy Spirit. So when they have the opportunity to, to talk, to, to tell the good news about Jesus to someone... They do it, right? They don't, they don't, they're not afraid. We looked at all that, how the how baptism of the Holy Spirit gives us courage. It's not about, you know, us having a pep rally, you know, or a pregame, you know, talk from the coach to get us all fired up and then we'll get out there and do it. No. It's about uh, being baptized with and filled with the Holy Spirit so that He changes you. And that's what we see with this new church, uh, with this first church. They were changed people from cowards to courageous, right? We looked at that last time, okay? Now, we'll end with this, and this is a kind of a teaser. Uh, it's a great place to end. Um, so I'm at chapter 3, verse 1 now. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. Okay, so they prayed. Uh, this is about 3 in the afternoon, so there were set times of prayer, uh, which is not a bad idea for us to adopt. Okay, not, not as a law, but as a way to r remember to be in relationship with God. Um, at three in the afternoon. Verse two. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Right? So this guy was crippled, right? There was there were there was no welfare in those days, or this actually was the welfare program in Jerusalem uh, for someone who was not able to work. They were put there, and people, as, as part of their worship of God, they, they gave to those in need and poor, right? And the church in Jerusalem was a poor church. They did not have a lot of money, okay? And we'll see Peter say that. 
So this guy's sitting there. They're coming into, uh, up past him into the temple, and he looks up and he, and he, and he expects them to give him something. And uh, Peter, uh, excuse me, verse 4. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And here's where I wanted to get to uh, for the end of our, our, our lesson tonight is, Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have. And he wasn't lying. It was a, they, were poor, they were poor in the church in Jerusalem. Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Right? And so think about what Peter said. He said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Now that strikes me uh, really to the heart as a pastor uh, in, in the United States because here's, here's the truth. Is in America today, uh, churches have silver and gold. Some of them have a lot of silver and gold. Some of them are too much about silver and gold, okay? But we have a lot of silver and gold. So we have what Peter didn't have. We have silver and gold. But on the other hand, we don't have what Peter and John had. We cannot say, to, we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit in the way where we can say to someone who's crippled, in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And that, listen, that, that haunts me as a, as, as a believer and as, and as your pastor, as a pastor here in America, that uh, uh, we are, we have more money than this, than, than, than this church in Jerusalem ever thought of. But we do not have the power of the Holy Spirit in the way that these first believers did. That's, a, that's an incredible truth. Okay? And being a pastor, you know, I go to pastor's con- and, and I'm telling you that and the part of the reason, that, well, the big reason is, is because in, in pastors and churches in America are not focused. They're not about, let's have, let's, let's, let's get a, a, a deep, loving relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let's be a church that, is, that, is, that, that God has poured out His Holy Spirit on and filled us up and overflowing and we're drenched with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, that's not what I hear when I go to pastor's conferences. As a matter of fact, um, I stopped going to pastor's conferences because it's always about silver and gold. It's always about here's how you can raise more money in your church. Here's how you can build buildings. You know, here's how. And like that's that's not in the Bible. You know. And by the way, uh, our church, you guys are generous, loving people. I can't believe the generosity. And it's really not generosity. It's worship that that our church family has continued both in Middleborough and in Mansfield at both locations to give to worship God generously with their gifts. Our our churches is not hurting financially through this crisis, and, and I want to thank you for that. But listen, we have to get the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to live in relationship with God so that, so that we, ha- we can, uh, and, I, and I think it's, well, well, look, there's no doubt about it. There's no reason why we today should not be able to pray for people who are sick and who are, who are crippled and, who, who, and, 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 and see God heal them. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about Benny Hinn kind of stuff. I'm not talking about, you know, these, these guys you see on TV smacking people on the foreheads or anything. That's not what I'm talking about. So don't confuse what I'm saying with that. It's not because those guys are all about silver and gold too. Um, but that, that, that just breaks my heart as a pastor to say, you know what? Uh, we, have a, we have a lot of silver and gold, but we, we, we do not have what Peter and John and that first church had which is the power of the Holy Spirit um, uh, working in us and through us. Now, we have the Holy Spirit, okay? I'm not saying he's absent, okay? But, but uh, we need to begin to live in such a way that, that, that his power thrives in us and through us, okay? And that's where, we're, that's where we're headed at Meeting House Church. 
when we get back together a little bit more and more people are coming to church, we're going to go through the book of Acts and we're going to look at this. Okay? So, uh, I guess that's a, place, a good place to end. I rambled long enough. Uh, look, great to see everybody uh, watching and taking part tonight. Uh, a lot of new names and, uh, and, and a lot of names we haven't seen in a while. So it's good to see everybody. Let's pray for healing in our nation right now, okay? Father God, we ask for the, the presence and power of your, of your Holy Spirit in our nation. God, there is there's, uh, you know, this terrible, tragic killing of, of George Floyd. And, uh, and there's racial tension, God, and it's being... Uh, we, we do not deny that there's racism in our, in our country, and it needs to be, uh, you know, we need to root every bit of racism out of our own hearts, God, and we need to be people who, who, who are for others who are not like us. Um, uh, but, God, everything is used to heighten racial tension. Uh, every, every, every interaction, every problem between uh, black and white is is just automatically considered a racial problem. So I don't want to I don't want to say there's no racism, God, uh, but but uh, I, I believe that uh, our country needs healing because we're at a point where we can't see anything but race. We do not see each other um, as made in the image of God. Um, uh, and so and and all you know, biblically speaking, we are all one race. We're all blood related. We come from. We have the same two parents, Adam and Eve. Uh, God, so I pray for healing. We pray for healing in our nation. Um, and God, those who are, are rioting and, and instigating, this is not about George Floyd anymore. This is about, about people trying to gain political points. And, and just, just, it's just about sinful, the sinfulness of humanity at this point. So I pray for, for healing, God, in our country, uh, for unity, um, and, and, and for the silencing of those voices that would uh, seek to divide um, uh, black from white uh, even more uh, than we already are in this country. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, we'll see you um, Wednesday night uh, for uh, Reach Into God's Word. All right, and hope to see you this Sunday. We had a great Sunday last Sunday. Come on out. Everything is safe. We're all the guidelines are being followed. All right, God bless.